We're continuing our Transit 101. Rebecca joins us now to talk about other cities. Rebecca, we've discussed what that Nashville plan includes, how much it costs and who's on each side. So now we want to look at what other cities have done. And there's one city in particular that's a pretty good model for this transit. Well, it's what Nashville is at least using as a, a way to learn from that city. A big group from Nashville traveled to Seattle to learn from the folks there. And while 31 of 35 major transit cities lost ridership last year, Seattle is one of the success stories. They now boast that half of their downtown workers use transit. They are a much denser city than Nashville, but also have streetcars, light rail, and a commuter train. So far, they have passed three major referendums on transit. And Seattle officials, they have applauded Nashville and our plan, but you know, transit isn't going as smoothly in other cities. Tell us about those. Yeah, that's right. Cities with these legacy transit systems that really haven't been updated or changed are having a hard time right now. People are using rideshare. They're driving more. It's some are working from home several days a week now, too. So uh, really all factors that contribute to that. So why can't Nashville do some kind of rideshare based transit system like van pooling or Uber or Lyft? That's something a lot of people are asking. And what most transit experts will say is that it just doesn't get cars off the road the same amount. In Seattle, they say it's all part of the mix there. They have the largest van pooling program in the entire country. And while it has its place, they say only 1.3% of their population uses it. Uber and Lyft generally endorse transit plans like they have here in Nashville. They say they can get people that first or last mile they need to go without clogging up the roads along the entire route. In Seattle, they seem to have it going on, but they're not a perfect model either. Absolutely not, Adam. And they have gone over budget on several projects. One of them right now is currently stalled because of it. But people there are also quick to point out they've been under budget on some projects too. And they say they don't think they'd have the large company settling down there without the transit options they do offer. All right, pretty good. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for looking into that for us. And we'll, of course, keep those Transit 101 talks going for you all the way up to Election Day with a different transit topic, transit topic each day.